messieurs and mademoiselles. It is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight. And now, we invite you to relax. Let's pull up a chair as the elementary proudly presents some learning. Be our guest, be our guest. Put our service to the test. Take your child by the hand, Sherry, and we'll provide the rest. Reading phonics, fluency, improved skills we guarantee. Try the new stuff, it's stupendous. Don't believe me, ask the students. They can sing and they'll have fun. Reading skills are number one. And the learning here is never second best. Go on, unfold your mind. Take a glance and find you'll be our guest. We are guests to be our guest. Reading cubes, learning play, dice and letters, hip hooray. We'll prepare and learn with flair, a learning cabaret. You're on board and you've shared, but the meeting's all prepared. No one's gloomy or complaining while the teacher's entertaining. We tell jokes, I do tricks with my future reading tips. And it's all in perfect taste that you can do. Stressed, it's shared reading we suggest. Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest, please be our guest. We love Hi everyone and good evening. My name is Brad Ritchie, superintendent of the Milton Union Schools. And together with Bradford and Northridge Schools, we are so thankful you are spending some time with us tonight for this virtual literacy event. Before I hand it over to Lisa Combs, we just have a few housekeeping items. Uh, just a reminder, your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. Uh, this entire session is being recorded and will be posted to each district's website and social media for future viewing. We also have included five minutes at the end uh, for questions and answers with Lisa about the activities she's sharing tonight. And you can type your questions in the chat box below. All right, Lisa, it's all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ritchie, Dr. Ritchie. And I am so happy to be back with you guys again this week. And this week, we're going to really kind of be building on what we talked about last week. So remember last week, we were downstairs in my grandkids' room looking at some of our books and talking about how to get the most bang for your time in um, reading aloud to your child or your grandchild or your nieces and nephews or your neighbor kids. Whenever you're reading aloud, we talked about some strategies for making sure you get the most out of that really valuable valuable time. We're going to take it one more step tonight and we're going to talk about getting your kids involved in a shared reading activity that's really going to be important for increasing not only their interest and engagement in reading but their comprehension and it's called building fluency through something really fun which is going to be called we're going to do readers theater. Okay so some things to think about when I say the word fluency big word that just means you're going to read it in a way that it sounds natural and interesting and you're reading with expression. So if you think like a lot of us remember this book, Are You My Mother? And if I'm not reading with good fluency, I'm just kind of reading the words, but I'm not really bringing much life to them. So if I'm not reading with good fluency, I'm not pacing it well. I'm not reading it at a natural pace. I'm not phrasing it correctly. I'm not reading it with emotions and expression. So it might be a mother bird sat on her egg and it doesn't have much life to it it doesn't have much expression it doesn't sound like a natural person would be talking uh, if they were telling you that story and that makes it harder for kids to understand the message of what they're reading so what we want to do is help model for them how to read with fluency and expression so that then when they're reading to themselves later and they're reading this book or another book 
they are reading and hearing a voice in their head that's talking naturally or when they're reading out loud they're reading with expression and at a natural pace and it makes it easier for them to understand what they're reading so it's really really important it's one of the biggest factors in helping your kids really understand what they read is to help them be fluent readers so we want them to be reading at a natural pace we want them to be paying attention to the punctuation the period or question mark or exclamation point at the end of the phrase we want them to look at the pictures and see what the characters faces look like so that they can kind of imagine what that character would sound like when they read. So the first thing that I always like to do when I'm preparing kids to play this reader's theater game uh, that we're going to talk about is I like them first to look at the pictures and, and we kind of take a picture walk through the book. Now, I want to make it clear that kids need to use pictures at times to understand what they're reading. That doesn't mean they're going to use the pictures to try to guess words, but they might, there might be things that are in the pictures that help us understand the situation, like a character's emotions. And so that gives us tips for how we would read it. So what I like to do is just let's look at the picture seat and see what characters there are in this book so that we're kind of primed for how many characters there are and what their relationships are to one another. So in this activity, what I would do is keep you those index cards handy that we gave you. And as you do kind of a picture walk through the book, let your child kind of guess as to who the characters are. There's a bird sitting on a nest. She's probably mother bird. So that would be one of the characters we would write down on one of the cards. We kind of glance through and we might bring attention to her face and think, how, how do you think she's feeling right here? What do you think is gonna happen next? She just flew off the nest. Who do you think that is? That's the baby bird. And so baby bird would go on an index card and we would go through, and if any of you remember this book, it's really fun because there's lots of characters in it that the baby bird meets along his way trying to find his mother. So there's a kitten, there's a hen, there's um, a dog and a cow. And my favorite is when they get to the machines like cars and planes, and then there's a, a, a big thing that he doesn't even know the name of, so he just calls it a snort because that's what sound it's making. So you would write all those characters as you go through the picture uh, walk and you'd write them all on index cards. And then you would deal them out to however many people you have in your reader's theater circle. So it could just be me and you, or it could be maybe sitting around the table, our whole family is gonna draw from the deck of cards. And that way we know we have to read that character's lines. So if I drew baby bird, I'm gonna be the one reading any line that the baby bird says. Uh, if I drew mother bird, I would read all of her lines. Now we probably will each get more than one character because, and so that will give us lots of chances to read. But our goal is to read it as if we were acting it out. We have to look at the character's face and think about how she or he would say it. We have to look at the punctuation. And if it has an exclamation point, we have to say it. Uh, My baby will be here soon. He will want to eat. So using all of those clues about punctuation, about the characters' faces, about their relationships with one another to bring expression to our reading. And it's really fun because then both you and your reading partners are getting a chance to read the characters' parts. So another fun thing that you can do afterwards is obviously you're going to have a stack of cards that you can add to from multiple books, okay? So we might do let's say that it was just me and you we might just decide to do green eggs and ham because that's really only two characters in that book and so you get to be sam i'll be uh, the other guy and we're going to take turns reading with expression each of those characters parts you put all of those cards together in a box and suddenly you've got a great charades game uh, to be able to draw a card and let's see Maybe I draw it and mine is plain and I have to read that word and then act it out without any words or you can set your own rules for charades to see if my partner can guess what the words are. 
so you can do or what my character is that I'm acting out. So you can do this activity with as many people as you want. You can even make it really fun and add costumes and props because my um, my granddaughter likes to play in our little kitchen. So we have um, pretend eggs. So if we were reading Green Eggs and Ham or Are You My Mother and we're doing it as Reader's Theater, we could even have props that we play with. Um, throughout the acting it out. Uh, you can even do it without a book uh, with you. So let's say you have read a familiar story. Remember how we talked about reading something numerous times helps us build fluency because each time we can read it a little faster and a little more naturally. So some stories like the three little pigs, uh, the three Goldilocks and the three bears, um, Little Red Riding Hood, those stories that we kind of know by heart because we've heard them or read them a lot of times. Sometimes we can act those out in Reader's Theater after we read them and we can add costumes, we can add props, and we can really have a lot of fun with it. And even though right then you're not reading, you are building reading comprehension because you read a story and then we're able to retell it or act it out from your memory of what happened. So that is a great uh, way to build reading comprehension. So like we talked about last time, don't get frustrated when your child wants to read a fish out of water for the 400th time, because that's great. They're getting the repetition necessary to really start reading it with fluency so that maybe the first time they read it out loud, um, they say, let's see, then something did happen. My little Otto began to grow. I saw him grow and grow. Soon he was too big for his little fish bowl. But on the fourth time you've read it, especially if they've had you taking turns with them and modeling how to read for, with expression, they're reading it like, then something did happen. Because when we see the word in bold, big letters, we emphasize it. My little Otto began to grow. I saw him grow and grow, and soon he was too big for his fishbowl. So that's the difference between reading like a robot and reading with expression and even acting it out. So there's endless possibilities. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. You can do it with just one partner, or you can do it with the whole family and have a blast with it. And it's something that the kids, can do with their siblings or their friends across the street. Like I shared last week, one of my favorite things to do as a kid was our neighborhood group of friends would do plays uh, out on each other's front porches or back porches or in our backyards. And we would make impromptu costumes and props. And it's a great way for kids to really explore the wonders of reading and uh, really build their fluency and their comprehension. And with that, I think I'm about out of time. So I will open it up to questions. While we're waiting to see if anyone has questions, I'm just for a moment, I'm going to bring your attention to a game that is in your kit. I don't need to tell you how to play this game because the instructions came with it, but this was kind of a bonus that we wanted to put in your kit that will be a game that you can play with your kids and your whole family all summer long that's going to help you help your child with their word building skills. So it's won a lot of awards. It's a blast. I hope you have a great time with it. Um, our family really enjoys it and it's kind of a bonus and a thank you for the time you've committed to working with your child through this parent engagement program. All right, if we don't have any questions, um, thanks Lisa, great as always. This wraps up our event this evening. If you play the games, just a, another reminder to take a picture and email them to your child's teacher or building principal, and we'll add your picture to the intro video. Uh, also complete the short survey after we close to provide us with some feedback for future events. And thank you again for joining us and have a great evening. Bye.